and, and just to name a few cities, it started. And it went to uh, to Larry, it went to Visalia, Porterville, Sonora, California, Ceres, outside of Modesto, Crow's Landing, if you know where that is. <laughs> so I was sitting here to save souls. Imagine uh, the irony it felt last night to land here. To try to physically save your life. upset over the last two and a half years. Uh, I just want to say there's a, a name up here, Lynn, died on November 14th, 2021. My birthday is actually the next day, November 15th. And to stand up here and see pictures of individuals who have been lost in hospitals, uh, the perspective of now standing here two years later to help defend these individuals was never what I visualized two and a half years ago. In May of 2020, three months after I watched a ill-advised hospital protocol take the final breath of my father-in-law, Jane's dad, Weldon, who was sitting up here in the front, my anger, grief, frustration led to a complete distrust for the medical profession as a whole. So when I started speaking out and hired a publicist to actually sit in my dining room and do 40 to 50 interviews every day to disclose to the world the truth behind the remdesivir drug and the research protocols or the research studies that were being referenced by Dr. Anthony Fauci to the world, all I was trying to do was to keep you from the hospital and the medical profession. And I want to say this right now. I've said it before at other events. Thank God for medical professionals like Peter McCullough. Yeah. And Dr. Florella, and Dr. Olivia. And many more that are not here. Thank God for them. <laughs> because there were other people who recognized something was very wrong with that profession and what was being portrayed and projected onto them as they were attempting to save the lives of innocent people around the world and in their clinics and in their hospitals. It was this aha moment for me. When, people, when medical doctors started calling going, can you come and educate us at our conferences about the risk of remdesivir and the hospital protocols? Imagine my shock to be a retired chiropractor and hear them say that to me. <laughs> it has been a phenomenal experience for me where I felt like I was on an island all by myself to finally see a group of individuals standing for innocent human beings. And it has been a great honor of mine. So I want to relay to you my appreciation to medical professionals who have took a stand with integrity, with ethics, and holding to their Hippocratic oath to first do no harm when so many blatantly ignored it and went along with whatever the protocols were, which was disgusting to me. I really, I really kind of used to make fun of the idea of practicing medicine. I used to think, what, do you not graduate and know how to use medicine? Why do you have to, why you have to keep practicing? When does the game start? <laughs> Only to then realize, out of appreciation for these great medical doctors, that there really is a beauty to being free to use your critical thinking and practice medicine. Why? Because not everybody is the same. There is no bullet, one magic singular silver bullet that actually heals everybody. There's no singular med uh, supplement that's gonna rescue your health that doesn't exist. You have to spend time treating the patient, watch how their body physiologically changes and improves, have it reported back, do your subjective, objective analysis, and then make adjustments. That's what these doctors are willing to do. When you were told by the NIH that you were only allowed to do one thing and one thing only. And what did Anthony Fauci say in, in May of 2020? This is what I read at home, unbeknownst to me, no one else read it. And that was fine. I was retired and had time to read these uh, studies. Anthony Fauci lied to the entire world, and Fox News make note of this, that I said this. 
Anthony Fauci lied in May of 2020. He stated that remdesivir was proven safe and effective, I quote, in a trial a year earlier than the pandemic in Africa against the virus called Ebola. He then stated in the same paragraph that it was proven safe and effective against COVID-19 patients in a cohort study that was fully funded, fully sponsored by the maker of remdesivir called Gilead. <laughs> that was a three month trial from January to March of 2020. All I did was click the hyperlinks because the first few words of the memo got my attention. There is only one, one antiviral experimental drug that can be used in hospitalized COVID-19 Americans. My very first thought was, well, if it's an antiviral experimental, this obviously isn't FDA approved, which means it has not been reviewed, nor has it been found safe and effective to get an FDA approval before that statement. So to declare that this experimental drug is what's gonna be used in every hospitalized patient, I wanted to know what that guy knew that I didn't about the drug remdesivir that I'd never heard of, nor did any of you probably. So I clicked the hyperlink to the first study with Ebola. Imagine my shock in five minutes to find out that there's four drugs in that trial, remdesivir, ZMAP, which is a monoclonal antibody, and then Regeneron, how many of you have heard of Regeneron? That was a monoclonal antibody also inside that study. And then a drug called MAB114. And anytime you see the initials MAB, that means monoclonal antibodies. These were the four experimental drugs and given out in four different regions of Africa. Anthony Fauci said it was found safe and effective against the Ebola virus. <coughs> All I did was read the study. The first table in that study discloses that the independent safety board of the study Looking at the data, found that remdesivir was the only drug that had a fatality rate over 50%. It was exactly 53.1% of all people they gave that drug to. Regeneron, of the four, had a 20% less mortality rate, and it was the best performance of all four drugs. My question was is, why would Anthony Fauci then come out and lie and say that it was found safe and effective when the safety board for the study found on August 9th, 2019, that it was the most deadly and ineffective drug and it was withdrawn from the trial permanently. Why would your NIAID department, head of the NIH, of that department only, why would that guy come out and lie to you and say that it was found safe and effective against Ebola? My very next thought was, what's he lying about? And how much did he know? Maybe he was just getting bad advice. How many times have you heard leaders